Australia is at a crossroads. One foot in multilingual Australia, the other slightly backwards in monolingual Australia. The myth that Australia has one language that sounds the same, which we refer to as Standard Australian English, is starting to expire. I can't say when we'll start to realise that it's okay to speak English with different sounds on this continent. However, there are many people living in Australia who subscribe to the view that one accent is not superior to the rest. In fact, I personally believe that if there is a type of accent that's better than the rest, it's an accent that shows that you speak more than one language. In spite of this modern view of the linguistic context of Australia, we still find ourselves encountering barriers if we don't fit the social norm. Why is it that so many people are feeling uncomfortable speaking up at work? How come it is that we're constantly asked, where are you from? Why is it that it's so hard to get ahead and communication feedback is something that seems to be open even to the stranger that you meet in the shop? Comments like, that's a strong accent, or you weren't promoted, your communication skills need to be worked on, or you should improve your English, all signify an old-fashioned view of language in this country. That being said, I think as a disclaimer, it's very important to know for you that I come from the position of a modern mindset here linguistically. If you speak Australian English, that doesn't sound like Australian standard English, there's nothing wrong with you. In fact, you should feel very proud that you have an identity of your own. That being said, some people at times decide to incorporate strategies to move their speech patterns slightly closer to standard Australian English. The purpose of this video is to show you if that's the case, if you'd like to sound slightly more standard Australian, what sounds should you really consider as essential in doing that? The top five sounds I recommend you correct, if they're wrong, to sound more Australian are the t sound, the v sound, the th sound, the r sound, and the famous, insanely difficult diphthong, O. A quick snapshot. What we'll do is we'll take one sound and I'll give you a few words that are aligned to that sound so that you can sort of screen and listen out there to hear what's happening on these kinds of words and try, if you can, to identify whether you're sitting right where you need to be in their production. If you're not sure if you're correct, don't panic, there are speech pathologists at Voice Science in Melbourne on Collins Street who can screen and check for you at Voice Science. You know where to find us. So the first sound is T. The T sound falls in many cases on words that have the letter T. In different word positions, it's doing different things according to the Australian accent. So I refer you to our blog post the features of Australian English have a little read through there. You need to make sure though that at the front of words, if you want to sound more Australian, the sound has a lot of air pressure. It is a strong sound. You could potentially spit on your conversation partner. T. Lots of air pressure there. The next sound is V. This sound across the board throughout the world, regardless of the English accent you're aiming for, received pronunciation, so British, General American, New Zealand, you need this sound. It's essential for linking, flow, rhythm, and accuracy because it happens so often. We hear the V sound at the front of words on words like this, that, therefore, though, it's not okay to say dis, dat, therefore, do, and it's also not okay if you're aiming to sound more Australian with the standard features of Australian, not that it's superior, to say zis, zat, ze, zo, or any other variant. The third sound is the th sound. 
I have horror memories of this sound as a kid. It used to be really tough. My best friend as a kid was called Ruth, and I referred to her as the roof on the house. That eventually got fixed at a young age. However, this sound can be a real beast to get right, and many people do need some one-on-one -on -one instruction. You can find this sound in words like thing, thanks, thank you, through, throat, thoughts, thinking, I'm pretty sure you can see you'll be using this one a lot. Also at the end of words, words like with, bath, cloth, and so many more. <laughs> the next sound we need to look at is the er sound. The er sound of Australian English is very distinct in the rules and patterns that it takes in terms of where it falls. Unlike general American accent, this sound doesn't occur every time you see it. Every time you see er, the letter er, at the front of a word, you need to say it, and it should be correct. Er, with the correct tongue placement, lip shaping, all of those things. You should have the ability to move from the sound to a vowel rapidly with the descent of your tongue, so you get a clean vowel immediately after the sound. So we need things like ran versus ran. You may not have picked that up, but very important that the tongue is working in overdrive. It's a very flexible, muscular sound that takes a lot of effort. If you're trilling on the sound, like that, ran, ring, rang, wrong, I love it. That's, that's what I use in opera, and that sound is beautiful. And I will never judge you for that. I have no problem if someone says bricks or anything like that. However, if you want to move your speech patterns a lot closer to the standard Australian features, you'll have to get rid of that beautiful trill and learn to make the boring rrr sound. The next sound is a real challenge. And this sound can be achieved if we take a good understanding of what sounds and vowels in particular you have in your first language. So I won't give specific instruction. You've probably picked up that words like no, go, home, coke, um, hope, soap are quite tricky. And the way to correct that one needs to be done in reference to your substitution. And everyone has very different substitutions happening on this vowel. But the distinct nature of Australian English in terms of vowels can be learnt by understanding this one vowel on its own. Obviously there's loads to do with all the others, but once you nail this one, I think you've got keys to unlock a lot of things about the rhythm of Australian English. So O usually falls on the letter O, and if you see a silent E at the end, you're probably going to need to use it, like cope, wrote, hope. Uh, and then there's all these other instances, words like co, um, so many. Not always consistent with the spelling. So being able to spot the vowel according to spelling patterns and then watch out for those idiosyncratic, tricky words that actually don't show you anything by the letters to suggest that that vowel is needed. I hope that you've enjoyed this quick rush through of five core vital sounds required to achieve an accent that sounds more like standard Australian, not suggesting it's the best. My name is Sarah Lobigeiger de Rodriguez. I'm the Chief Speech Pathologist at Voice Science. I lead a team of passionate speech pathologists who work in the area of accent modification, as well as voice therapy, social communication, loads of practical strategies are pumping out of our clinic on a daily basis for our clients. If you haven't heard of us before, and you enjoyed this video, make sure you click like, subscribe, head to our Instagram, you can check out a bit of behind the scenes in the clinic there, and do be sure to check out our website at thevoicescience.com. I have for you a special blog post that links to this video that gives you those sounds, shows you the symbols, gives you a few words to screen for, and just puts a nice big bow on this topic of what are the five most important sounds required to achieve an accent that sounds a lot closer to standard Australian English. Australian English has so many sounds in it. It's what keeps me busy, animated, and motivated when I'm dealing with my clients in the clinic at Voice Science. If you would like to know more about how it works, be sure to comment below. You can also send me an email, or alternatively, don't forget to check out our Diagnostic Accent and Communication 
assessment. If you would like to learn more about what features of your pronunciation you could alter and shift to move your accent in the direction you're hoping for. Have a wonderful day. Ciao.